so hello everyone welcome to this new session so this is the third part of this uh, one final revision series okay where we have already discussed the concepts related to two modules of control system okay i have already recalled some of the concepts and also brief explanation is available in our channel for all these modules okay yeah so next module is module 3 that is time response of control system okay so now what is this time response of control system okay okay the time response means uh, response of given system which function of time is applied to the excitation that is time response of this input plot is given to one system and whatever the change which we get in the output that sudden change is called as the time response and that time response specifications are having uh, some of the important parameters which we have already discussed okay i'm just going to recall it to you all okay one parameter is called as uh, transient state and other parameter is called as steady state okay transient state is represented as y t of t steady state is represented as y s of t y t of t is the part of time response that goes to zero and becomes very large okay that is called as the transient state and part of total response after the transient response is called as the steady state okay so now what is the steady state error steady state error is the difference between desired and actual output at infinite time or at steady state okay yeah so here we can see that this is this is the simple graph we have represented it for transient state and steady state so here the steady state uh, uh, of time which is causing the steady state error and some of the important typical signals we have already discussed one is step signal okay uh, step input ramp input and parabolic input it's a uh, gain con instantaneous change also we have represented that is r of t is given as a into u s of t and the r of t in case of ramp is given as 80 into u of u s of t in parabola it is given as 80 square by 2 into u s of t okay then also we have discussed the derivation of steady state error path with where we are having one simple minor loop and that we should be representing by using the steady state error okay for unity feedback system the steady state error it is given as e of s is equal to r of s divided by 1 plus g of s for a non unity feedback system it is given as r of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s okay yeah here also we have discussed the steady state error dependence it it mainly depends on the r of s type and magnitude g of s into h of s that is the transfer function and it is a dominant or non non linearity is present okay that is no uh, linear relation is uh, present when we are calculating any kind of steady state error we have also discussed effect of input on st steady state error using the static error coefficient method okay that is one by one we have taken the reference inputs is step ramp and parabolic and we have we have checked for static error coefficient method that is in case of reference input of step of magnitude then we have taken r of s is equal to a by s okay then steady state error formula limit s tending to 0 s into r of s divided by s into the uh, r of s divided by 1 plus uh, uh, 1 plus g of s into h of s where in case of r of s you should be substituting it as uh, a by s okay so that we can cancel s and we would be left with es is equal to limit s tending to 0 a divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s that is apply the uh, limit s tending to 0 for this uh, term here that is a divided by 1 plus limit s tending to 0 g of s into h of s where this limit s tending to 0 g of s into h of s has one uh, term that is called as kp that kp is called as positional error coefficient that we would be getting in case of step input okay the kp it and this is the formula for kp which we have derived from this that is limit s tending to 0 g of s into h of s similarly we have discussed for a ramp input that is r of s is equal to a by s square so we have substituted in the formula for steady state error and we have got the relation that is a uh, uh, limit uh, s tending to 0 s into g of s into h of s that is given as kv and that kv is uh, getting with this ramp and that kv is called as velocity error coefficient okay that if we substitute back here this would be getting the relation for steady state error in case of ramp input that is a divided by kv and with kv is given as velocity error coefficient and this is the formula for kv similarly for step input this is the steady state error that is a divided by 1 plus kp okay and also for parabolic input the formula is r of s is equal to 80 square by 2 in uh, s domain it is represented as a by s cube then substitute in the formula so that we can cancel one s here you would be left with only a by s square here okay then s square you should be bringing down okay so that this would be uh, writing it as a divided by s square into 
g of s into h of s then separately apply the limit for the denominator side so that we would be getting limit s tending to 0 s square into g of s into h of s that is equal to the ka okay that ka is represented as acceleration error coefficient if we substitute back in the steady state error this is the relation we get for the parabolic input steady state error is calculated by using the formula ess is equal to a divided by k okay so this is the error coefficient table where we have separately written the static error coefficients and the steady state error caused by that static error coefficient okay in case of step input ramp input and parabolic input this is the table here you can note it down okay we have already discussed this i am just brushing it to you all okay and also one more concept we have discussed the effect of change in the transfer function okay effect of change in the transfer function we have already discussed g of s into h of s in this way the general form is represented okay in numerator side it is represented as k into 1 plus t s 1 plus t 2 s and 1 plus t n s it goes on divided by s power j where j represents the resultant between gain that j is called as a represent as the type of system whenever the value of j is 0 it is type 0 system j is 1 type 1 j is 2 type 2 we already discussed the analysis of type 0 1 2 system for different kinds of step input ramp input parabolic input what is the change in g of s into h of s okay you can uh, see our video where in module 3 video, video lecture series it is already available so just i'm just uh, uh, showing it to you all these all of these concepts are already discussed analysis of different kinds of systems and this is a table here we have found for type 0 type 1 type 2 system for type 0 what is the value of kp kv ka and what is the value of steady state error in case of step ramp and parabolic for type 0 1 and type 2 system we have already discussed it okay and also the problems related to these kind of uh, systems type 0 type 1 type 2 system and also the uh, formulas to find the steady state errors uh, where they would be giving you one simple transfer function okay for that they would be giving you one input and also they would be determining to uh, determine the type of system and also they would be try determining to trying to say to calculate the value of kp kv k also the steady state error so that by seeing the uh, transfer function only you should be get telling that after uh, representing it in a general form if it's not in the general form you should try to represent that in a general form like this. this since this is not in the general form try to represent this in general form and then check the values of k and where check the denominator side what is the power of s from that we can uh, determine the type of system okay then for that type of system what is the uh, uh, coefficient we should be using either positional velocity or acceleration you should be guessing it then we should be applying the formula and trying to find okay yeah so these kind of many many problems these all the problems we have already discussed okay uh, so that that is in this problem they have given the input uh, for that input uh, apply this transfer function write in general form and uh, write find the parameters kp kv ka okay then uh, in this input sometimes it, this input would be happening only one due to one simple uh, step input ramp input or parabolic input and this input also would be the combination of all these three inputs that inputs you should be writing it separately and you should be representing their amplitudes then separately for steady state error for step input ramp input parabolic input you should be trying to find using the formulas for steady state error for uh, sim different coefficients that is positional velocity and acceleration try to find the values of steady state error then uh, apply all the steady state error you should be summing up all of them and you should be calculating the final steady state error these kind of problems are also discussed so please uh, go through it so this comes the second part of this model that is analysis of first order system okay analysis of first order system also we have discussed the different kinds of order of system that is first order second order system okay analysis it's a unit step response okay by applying the partial fraction method what is the relationship we get uh, for a unit step response we have already discussed it in our channel okay also analysis of second order system this is very important analysis of second order system where the closed loop transfer function of second order system in general it is represented like this so it is omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square this should be of this form okay using this form the whatever the transfer function obtained we should be uh, of trying to write this in this form okay from this form you should be trying to calculate the values of omega n square and zeta which is from the denominator side and the denominator side of a transfer function is always called as one characteristic equation this symbol is called as zeta omega n is called as natural frequency okay okay so these are all the things analysis of second order system we have already done it an effect of zeta on second order system also you have taken by taking the input of r of s is equal to 1 by s okay we have uh, applied this formula in this formula we have substituted the value of r of s is equal to 1 by s then trying to find the roots of the equation of the denominator side and that from that we are getting the values of uh, roots like this okay and these roots we have uh, applied in different kinds of cases 
right where case one is where zeta lies between one to infinity what is, what is the root change of roots which you are getting and what is the response of this system whenever the zeta lies between one to infinity in, we know that in case of one to infinity the response obtained is over damped okay output is purely exponential and the roots are real negative and unequal roots if we substitute the value of zeta which is lying from one to infinity okay similarly in case two where the value of zeta is equal to one okay what would be the uh, equation we are getting the roots we are getting real negative and equal roots okay then uh, here the response of the system is critically damped in case of case three when the zeta lies between zero and one the response obtained is under damped and the roots are complex conjugate with negative real parts okay and also in case four we have discussed when zeta equal to zero what and all are the roots uh, roots are complex conjugates with zero real parts and purely imaginary in nature and completely oscillating and under undamped system in case of zeta is equal to zero okay as this beautiful table also i have already discussed to you all what is the range of zeta the types of uh, roots or closed loop poles obtained nature of response and system classification that is response obtained okay so this also you should be knowing okay for different uh, kind of uh, second order systems uh, we have discussed already and also we have discussed the derivation of unit step response of second order under damped system for under damped system zeta is less than one right under damped system this is the condition zeta is less than one we have applied in the particular roots condition uh, we have substituted the value of zeta omega n as alpha omega n in square root of one minus zeta square as omega d and uh, done this derivation beautifully in order to get the response as c of t is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus zeta omega n t divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square into sin omega dt plus zeta. This is the output response which we are getting. Using these output response, we have already derived the equations for peak time, uh, peak overshoot, rise time, settling time, all of them. And also we have discussed the definitions related to delay time, rise time, its formulas, peak time, peak overshoot, okay, settling time, percentage peak overshoot, all of them we have discussed it. And in this plot also we can see that this is the peak overshoot obtained that is uh, it is going above the limit and uh, the where from that point which is going above the limit that is called as peak overshoot and this is called as in the rise time where 90 percent of the uh, uh, above time then this is delay time okay Th this is peak time rise time all of them we have discussed this is the settling time here this whole thing is called a settling time so here the output is getting settled okay where no error is there and here this part is called where the error is getting nullified that is called as the steady state error okay yeah, we have already discussed the derivations of peak time okay using the output response which i got c of t all of them we have discussed okay then the derivation of peak overshoot also we have discussed okay in our video you can pause the way you can uh, refer it in our channel it is available derivation of rise time settling time because uh, any one derivation is must okay from these derivations any one of them or two of them would be definitely asked in this from this model okay and also the problems related to all of these peak time, rise time and these all of them are called as time domain specifications. Separately they would be asking you to find the time domain specifications. That is they would be giving you one simple transfer function or else they would be giving you like this one block. From this block you should be trying to find the transfer function that is C of S by R of S using this formula. Try to find the transfer function and write Try, try to write it in the form of omega n square uh, divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square then uh, from the denominator side in place of omega n square and 2 zeta omega n whatever the values are they substitute it and try to find the values of zeta and omega omega n okay then try to find all other time domain specifications okay so these kind of problems are must so that's all from this module we have uh, tried i've tried to discuss some of the important concepts of this module hope you have followed the video okay so now let's uh, end this video that's all for this session all the best guys thank you please like share subscribe